Welcome to a new in the mail, the service that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. This one will be focused on 3D printing because as you know I recently got a new 3D printer, the Creality Ender 3 Pro and that means new upgrades because why would you get a 3D printer other than constantly work on it and upgrade it. That 3D printing stuff that everyone is talking about is like secondary. You will primarily work on the printer itself once you get it. So let's start with the most important upgrade I plan. This is the SKR Mini E3 version 2.0, which is the latest version of this 32-bit uh, motherboard. Uh, it's a plug and play upgrade for the Ender 3. This board comes loaded with features like uh, Trinamic, silent stepper drivers, it supports dual z-axis and enough memory and processing power to support uh, pretty much every feature you would want to enable from Marlin. As far as I know it this even comes loaded with the right firmware, it's relatively a new release of Marlin so it's truly a plug and play solution for my printer. Uh, this will be a great starting base for future upgrades and it really makes your life easier. Just a quick example, if you want to install a, a build touch sensor, there's no more messing around with uh, cutting and soldering wires. There's a special connector for that on this board. You just plug in your uh, sensor wires directly into the motherboard. But more about this in a separate video where I install it on my 3D printer. Uh, I just wanted to show it in this uh, mailbag video to show you how it comes packed and inside the box you also get the small heat sinks for the stepper drivers. The next item is a Sonoff uh, smart socket and the box is a bit bashed from uh, shipping uh, but the item inside survived. It comes in this uh, compact form factor and it's compatible with both 110 and uh, 240 volts AC up to 10 amps and I plan to use this to automate turning on and off the power to the 3D printer from Octoprint because if you know how Octoprint works sometimes you might want to be able to turn off the printer remotely after it's uh, finished printing or even better to add a security feature that can cut power to it when it senses uh, something is not right. Uh, this is actually the second unit that I ordered. Uh, this one arrived pretty fast in just about three weeks. The first one was ordered at the start of March when flights started getting cancelled so the whole international postage system went down. I believe the first order wasn't even uh, sent out by the seller so uh, that was not very nice but uh, on the second order it went fine and now this will await it, it, its installment on the uh, 3D printer. Uh, make sure you get the right type of plug because they offer it in all kinds of uh, different styles. As usual you'll find the link to this in the description below. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay.com which is a high quality professional PCB manufacturer with quick turnaround times and advanced manufacturing capability. They are currently celebrating their 6th year anniversary and are giving away free discount coupons so now is a good time to order your boards and take advantage of those coupons. Check out their website linked below. Next I have a set of these uh, spring steel washers or compression washers, not sure what the correct name is for these. And if you remember Vlog 308 where I showed that issue with the dual gear extruder grinding itself, well one of the solutions you guys suggested is to include uh, a spring washer in the uh, uh, bottom of that gear so it keeps it from rubbing and grinding the soft aluminum profile. I couldn't find these locally so uh, I just ordered them from Aliexpress and if we look closely at one of these uh, we will notice uh, this is not actually a flat surface uh, washer so these waves should be capable of being compressed like a spring. I believe this can help by pushing the gear that was rubbing up and away from the soft aluminum surface and can also minimize friction by having a, a lower contact surface by just riding on those waves. So I'm sure some of my viewers know more about these uh, things and they'll let us know in the comments how one of these works but uh, it looks good and I think it's, it's gonna improve that system. Next I ordered myself some of this uh, famous uh, Capricorn tube upgrade, it's the blue stuff and first of all you might ask yourself why would you want to upgrade the Bowden tube from the default one because it just passes some filament right, um, it works, why fix something that works? 
well if you look closely while you print you'll notice you'll notice two things the bowden tube will stretch and bend during retraction and it will also move in and out of these uh, connectors slightly uh, and this means one thing the hot end is not receiving the calculated length of filament because of this stretching and movement and here comes the capricorn tube which is supposed to have like these tighter tolerances on the inside diameter and it, it's supposed to stretch less on the outside these couplers are supposed to be of uh, better quality and grip the tube better to minimize this problem and it's best to get this stuff from the uh, official website because there are a lot of fakes around. I mean, it's easy to just manufacture some blue tubing and call it Capricorn tube. But I purchased mine from the Creality official AliExpress store. And I've had a chat with Capricorn on Twitter. They confirmed that this is an official reseller for the products. And I've also tried to measure the uh, dimensions of the tube and compare them with the official specs. They were not exactly the same but you can't really measure internal diameter precisely using calipers so it was close enough if you want to be 100 percent sure get it from the official shop don't go for the cheapest you can find on aliexpress after installing the new bowden tube or even on your existing one a good upgrade are these uh, clips which you slide on the uh, connectors i showed earlier uh, these uh, help keep these uh, these tabs locked so they they don't slide around as much uh, and this should also help minimize the problem i mentioned earlier where the tube slides in and out of the connector they're not expensive about one dollar for a set of 10 pieces and it's it's definitely something you should get and install on your 3d printer if you don't already have these next i got a five meter roll of gt2 six millimeter wide rubber belt and this is the stuff that's used on most 3D printers, but you'd need to check before ordering to make sure uh, this is the size you need. I'm not sure of the quality of this, it's obviously a no-name brand and I have no prior experience with buying this stuff, uh, but I just wanted to have it as a spare part in case something breaks. Over time I've started keeping spare parts for the 3D printer in my stock because I've noticed that parts tend to fail when I start an important long project with uh, multiple hours of printing it's a bummer to have your 3d printer stop to wait for several days in my case for uh, that part to be delivered so from now on i'm keeping these basic spares for the essential parts like heater cartridge thermistor belts clips stuff like that my next item is a 12 volts 50 watts heater cartridge and this was a spare part I ordered when I was printing uh, face shields back in March. I was still using the CR10 3D printer back then which runs on 12 volts. Uh, now I have the Ender 3 Pro which runs on 24 volts. So I have no use for this uh, anymore. I'll have to order a 24 volts version of this. I've also seen 70 watts rated cartridges. And I would imagine those are capable of heating up faster and they can reach a higher temperature. Not that I would need anything above 250 degrees Celsius. I'm, I'm only printing PLA and PTG. But I was wondering if the other components would need to be upgraded. Because surely the stock hot end as well as the stock thermistor can't go up to 400 or 500 degrees. Uh, like they're claiming for that heating cartridge without being scorched. Also for the CR10 uh, stock hot end, I ordered this silicon sock to protect the hot end and insulate it. I noticed there is a buildup of junk, especially when I was printing with PTG, uh, which was stringing. Luckily, the new Ender 3 Pro already comes loaded with the silicon sock, but it's good to know these exist as spare parts. So it might be worth getting one for your 3D printer if you don't already have one. Like I said, it's going to protect stuff from sticking to the hot end. I had issues with the uh, stock glass bead thermistor on my CR10 when I was printing face shields continuously. And at some point it started reporting the wrong temperature. It was reading high, so the hot end was actually running too low, causing blockages. So back in March, I ordered a set of five of these. Uh, they are pretty inexpensive and well worth keeping them as pairs because sooner or later, if you print a lot, these will fail and they are the 100k 3950 ntc glass bead thermistor uh, these are pretty common but there are also other form factors for this so you need to check what you have on your printer before ordering these uh, you'll find them pretty much on every 3d printer but uh, be aware 
these glass bead ones are only capable of going up to 250 maybe 300 degrees celsius and especially on the cr10 heater block i really don't like how these are just shoved into a hole and there isn't a good contact with the heater some thermal grease might help in that case next i have another 3950 ntc but this one is enclosed in a metal cartridge and the specs claim the maximum temperature is higher at 350 degrees celsius and that seems a bit exaggerated for a 3950 thermistor but i like this style of cartridge better than the glass bead this should have a better thermal interface with the hot end and mechanically should be stronger Depending on the type of hot end you have, this may or may not fit the cartridge. This is uh, 3 mm wide and 20 mm long. And this is the PT100 RTD style package. Uh, most new hot end designs support this style of package. And next up I have yet another uh, 3950 NTC, same as the previous one encapsulated in, uh, in this uh, metal cartridge. And this one is rated by the seller of being able to go up to 280 degrees Celsius, but it was mislabeled as a PT100 in the title. What they mean was that it's the same package and uh, size as a PT100, so that's what they were probably trying to say but still it's it's misleading to put PT100 in the title of this NTC. Now I have two of these uh, PT100 uh, style uh, 38, 50, 3950 thermistors uh, so probably they will be used someday. I also thought about uh, upgrading the hot end so I got the uh, E3D uh, V6 or a replica of the original E3D but a good one. I did a bit of research on uh, AliExpress and I've read the feedback from various sellers, uh, the feedback that users left and apparently this one which I ordered from a particular shop is machined with some higher precision and overall is of higher quality. It was also a few bucks more expensive than the cheapest option on AliExpress, but such a hot end brings a few advantages. You can go to higher temperatures, it's more reliable, it has better heat separation, and in general will allow you to do higher quality prints with a wider variety of materials. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use this one on my new Ender 3 because I once again ordered this back in March. I got the 12 volts version for the CR10 while the Ender 3 runs on 24 volts. So I'll have to order a new one and I will do a separate video on installing this on the CR10. The two thermistors in the PT100 style package that I showed earlier are compatible with this hot end. Let me show you. So here is the, uh, the part where the uh, nozzle and the thermistor would slide in so you can see this is a much better fit than just having that glass bead thermistor floating in there and since we were talking about the PT100 I also got a true PT100 and this uh, is an RTD which stands for resistance temperature detector and they work similar to a thermistor but they have a different construction inside which gives them some advantages like higher operating temperature this can go up to 400 degrees celsius and it has a better linearity. Now most 3D printer motherboards will not be capable of reading this PT100 by default so you will need some kind of amplifier module and I got this one which is specifically designed for this purpose. I believe on this board we have an INA826 which is a precision instrumentation op-amp and this combo is not exactly cheap by my standards but if you need the higher working temperature as well as the stability and possibly reliability of the PT100 it might be worth upgrading to something like this on your 3D printer. I also got a couple of tools that should help with the usual 3D printer maintenance. I mean the included allen keys were fine for me, I've used those with no problem, but when it comes to replacing nozzles that's where something like this could be more effective by getting in there and just unscrewing the nozzle. This key has different sizes, it's 7 mm on this end, 3.5 mm on the other end and some smaller size on the uh, sides. This other one resembles a lot some bicycle keys I used to have as a kid. 
but once again it should help with uh, stuff uh, around the hot end. I also got this new brass cleaning brush which I will be using for uh, cleaning the hot end and this one seems to be of higher quality and uh, higher density when compared to this other style uh, I was getting from AliExpress so check them out this new one has um, a higher density uh, on the brush and it feels softer than uh, this one on the right so it's probably uh, better to use something like this to clean the uh, hot end of the 3d printer that was all for today i hope this uh, exclusively 3d printing mailbag video was interesting to watch i mean most people own a 3d printer these days so it's nice to learn about these tools spare parts or upgrades that you can do to your 3d printer as usual there will be links for this stuff in the description below so you can check them out uh, I will also link a playlist with all of my mailbag videos right here on screen so you can click that if you want to watch more mailbag videos. Smash that like button and I will see you next time.